A tomato plant taught me the transformative power of mother energy. Last year, I started perimenopause and I had to mourn the idea of the family that would never be. The loving husband with the house full of kids, with pies on the windowsill in the suburbs. As a result, I entered into a deep depression and I discovered gardening. It actually saved me. I started gardening to deal with loss and I actually learned a lot about life. I don't know how many of you remember, but in New York last year, it rained a lot. And so when the leaves on my tomato plants started turning yellow with little brown spots, I thought nothing of it. After all, I was a new gardener. But the more and more leaves turned yellow, my plants began to die. And you know, when you're feeling sick, you run to the internet and you start Googling it. Well, that's how I was. I was taking pictures of my leaves and I was running to the internet trying to find out what this was. Ah, and I don't know how many of you have ever heard of blight. Well, blight is a fungus. If left unchecked, it will kill your plants dead, all of them. Because, you know, tomatoes grow like a vine, so they're all intertwined. And so wherever this blight touches, kaput. So I got into surgical mode and I started cutting off these leaves, cutting, 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 cutting. And this one plant was particularly afflicted. And so I started cutting off the leaves further and further until all the leaves had been cut off because it had been so badly affected by the blight. I know how many of you remember the peanuts, you know, with Charlie Brown. There was an episode where they had this Christmas tree and the Christmas tree was all skinny and scrawny and, and they were standing around singing to it. Well, this tomato twig was actually worse than that because it had no leaves, none. Blight loves moisture, that's how it spreads, but tomato plants also love moisture. They love water deep down in their roots. So it rained for a few days, and after the rain I came out, and this tomato twig had produced leaves. And not only that, it had pushed out healthy fruit. Now the common knowledge that we've been taught is that sickness begets sickness, that you can't get something healthy from something sick, that if the foundation is messed up, then anything on top of it will be messed up. But that was until I learned the transformative power of mother energy, you see. Because as this plant was dying, and oh yes, it was dying, because the blight had gotten it and it was taking it under. As this plant's body was warped and twisted and giving in to the dis-ease, it produced healthy, perfect fruit. Plump, juicy, ripe, red tomatoes, blemish-free and perfect in every way. That this plant sacrificed itself to produce little leaves, to catch the sun, to produce energy for its fruit. And this reminded me of my mother, who must have found out that she was dying around the same time that I was getting my acceptance letters to college. And she knew that if she had told me, I would have stayed. And I was to be the first college educated girl on my mother's side. And so she kept this secret. And as I was getting my acceptance letters, I was so happy and enthralled. And I went off to college and it wasn't until my sophomore year that I got that fateful call that she was gone. And when I think back, I think of the love that it must have taken for her to give up and sacrifice everything so that the fruit of her loins could be educated. I am the first college educated girl on my mother's side. And when I think about mother's love, I think about that love where we give of ourselves in a capacity that seems far greater than we can give, but not out of self-abuse, but out of love for our creation. So I implore each one of us to look at ourselves in our lives, at our selfless creations, and find the mother energy inside of you because there's more ways to give life than giving birth.